Hey guys, Adam Trigger here with Wager Talk, back for another college basketball preview. We're just a couple days away from the season tipping off on November 4th, Monday, November 4th, and today we're talking Tarleton State. My good friend Kyle Cruz is back with us. He came on back in March, and he's back, the play-by-play -play commentator. If you're listening to Tarleton State men's basketball on the radio broadcast, you're listening to Kyle's voice. He's been nice enough to join us to, to preview the 2024-2025 season. Uh, welcome in, Kyle. I know football has been awesome for Tarleton this year, but college hoop is around the corner. Um, what, what's the vibe like on campus right now? You're having me on, Adam. I mean, it's a football weekend here at Tarleton State, and, you know, uh, here in the state of Texas, that means those are six singular events you host every year. So everyone's excited. Eastern Kentucky coming to town tomorrow. Guys are going to try uh, to move to 8-1. and one. And so, you know, that's kind of what we've got in our line of sight here in the athletic department. But as you said, we got a big one on Monday night over in Dallas as Tarleton men's basketball opens their season against SMU. So we're fired up. This is what we call crossover season here. It's that good kind of stress. Everybody playing at home, or playing at once, I should say. So, yeah, like I said, we couldn't ask for anything better here in Stephenville right now. Yeah, it just it seems like a great time to be a Texan. You guys have a great new basketball facility on the horizon uh, next year. So this will be the final year at Wisdom Gym, uh, a great venue. What was, still, I, I've been to 45 different stops now. Uh, it's Tarleton State still one of my favorites. Uh, you guys are, are awesome. Everyone there is just incredible i can't wait to go back and see the new venue uh next year but in the context of of basketball the the big thing we need to talk about off the top is the four-year transition transition period is is over so now the ncaa tournament is the goal and you, you look at this roster you know obviously a lot of those guys that came in four years ago graduated and and, and build the program to what it was are no longer here but that, that's got to be a, a huge sort of motivating factor. Um, you know, now that there's that light at the end of the tunnel, you you win that tournament at the Orleans Arena in Vegas in March, and you're going dancing. Like, talk, yeah, you know, just just talk about that for a second. It's one of the biggest challenges of the reclassification period, Adam, is when our coaches, and not just for football or basketball, for all of our sports, when they get into living rooms, it's, it's a tough sell at times. You can't play for championships for four years. And so it was really cool back in May. We wrapped it up. Our final event as a reclassifying institution, our baseball program won the WAC title. That's never happened on the baseball side. A reclassifying institution has never won their conference tournament in baseball. Fuller Smith's crew did that. And I tell everyone, that was just such a sweet moment for all of us because you see the four years of hard work come together. And those guys made us all proud out in Mesa. But yes, you know, March Madness, that is one of the biggest events in all of college athletics every year. So the ability to be able to go to Vegas, get hot, try to punch your ticket to the NCAA tournament, I mean, that's huge for a recruiting standpoint for the Texans. And so I know Billy Clyde and his crew, they're ready to get after it. You know, we've got a challenging non-conference schedule, and the WAC's going to be one of the top mid-major leagues in America once again this year. But, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that is a huge reward for our student-athletes, and not just the new ones, but the ones that have stuck this reclassification out who have bought into the vision of Tarleton. They now get the opportunity to compete for a conference championship that will then put them into the NCAA tournament. So, absolutely, we're, we're fired up that we're NCAA tournament ready. Yeah, it, it almost looked like the basketball team was going to, you know, for, force the committee to, you know, shoot down a, a dream last year, of course, the, the Tarleton had just an incredible season. I want to talk about for a second because th this was the rare scenario where, like, being too good almost put Tarleton in a tough spot from the coaching standpoint. So, of course, uh, Billy Gillespie has done a phenomenal job building this program from, you know, first year in D1 coming from the D2 to the D1 ranks. Now, last year was his fourth season, and he takes a medical leave in November. Joe Jones takes over, goes 23-8, and eight, and has Tarleton on, on the brink of, of you know, winning a, a WAC title. Um, you know, to the point where Jones' stock went up as a coach, he's now elsewhere. Uh, Galepsi, you know, and he's still here and ready to be the coach again, but... You know, a lot of his players either graduate or left. But I also think that, like, how well they did last year, how well Tarleton State did last year, really speaks to uh, Billy Clyde's ability to to build a program. And, you know, now, though, you come in, and, and the, the roster does look very different. Uh, but the, the, the point I wanted to make 
before we get into that was, you know, something I, I dug up that I think is very interesting. Uh, you know, obviously, Ken Palm's the, the rating system that is pretty much widespread, um, kind of used even by, by broadcast teams, and, and everyone kind of references the Ken Palm ratings. Galepsi has outperformed his preseason Ken Palm rating all four years he's been at Tarleton State, including last year, even, even with, the, you know, with the team last year. This year's team looks very different. But, like, talk to me about the excitement around some of the freshmen. Obviously, getting Freddie Hicks back is huge. And, uh, you know, what are some of the things that we can expect? Because a as a college basketball fan, I feel like I know far less about this team than I have, you know, Tarleton teams of the past couple of years. Like Gillespie, back in the sap with the men's basketball program coaching, uh, again, you know, it it was something, it, it was a curveball last year. Didn't expect to see Coach have to step aside and – even though Coach wasn't on the front line, so to speak, coaching, I mean, his fingerprints are all over it, Adam. I mean, you start with the fact that he hands it over to one of the best players he's ever coached in Joseph Jones, uh, who had an outstanding career at Texas A&M. He's come up under Coach G. He's playing within Coach G's system. And so while Coach wasn't there, so to speak, he, him and his system were always there, always in place. And the other thing that's important is you got to tip your cap to Billy Clyde in the sense that he was cleared in February. If he wanted to come back and sit in that seat, he could have. But he's talked time and time with me again about it. You know, Coach has got a, a, the quote-unquote sickness and addiction to winning. And that's what he said is he said, we are winning now. I am not going to come back and get in the middle of that. And so he stayed aside until the season didn't let Joe finish it. Joe has now moved on to UTSA. Coach talks time and again about how that's the goal. You want not only to move your kids on like Ja'Cory Smith, Keandre Gaddy, and Lou Williams for them to play professional basketball, you want to see your assistants move on to bigger and better jobs. Uh, really, it's the definition of the program. And so I know he's really proud of Joe, like we all are, that he's now got that gig at UTSA. And then you mentioned it. This year's going to be a different look, though, for the Texans. And really... I wouldn't say that's a, a Tarleton State thing, so to speak, Adam. With the NIL and the transfer portal now, kids have the ability to get up and move on at, at any moment. And then you add the, the NIL piece in there, and it's tricky for mid-majors. You know that right now. I mean, resources are a huge, huge topic of conversation around the mid-major basketball right now. And so with Coach, you know, he's got a young group this year, one that's going to learn trial by fire early in the year. It's a beast of a non-conference schedule, you know, that starts at SMU on Monday, but it's going to have the likes of Florida State and Michigan and Baylor, Oklahoma State. And then the WAC Conference USA Challenge is another one. You go to a challenge, uh, excuse me, uh, UTEP on the road. That's a quality basketball team who actually has one of our former players from last year, Devin Barnes, on it. And then right after SMU, you got no time to rest. You got a quality, quality Sam Houston club coming here for a home game on Saturday night following that. And so th there's no time to worry about the youth. You know, you've got to get after it early and often. I didn't even mention the fact going to the Bahamar Challenge out in the Bahamas. That is going to be a quality field as well. And so, yes, I, I think once again, you hit the nail on the head. There's some quality young kids. You've got guys like Jordan Mazzell, Keaton Bristow, talented junior college transfer, and Chris Impaca, as well as Ronnie Harrison. I mean, those are just a list of few of them. And the Texans, who are a bit bit by the injury bug right now, they're going to get some important guys back. Uh, you have Andy Sigascar out from France who has come over. He's a very talented post player who they're trying to get up to speed from a health standpoint. Kareem El Ghazawi, he is from Egypt. He's another guy who's going to come into a lot of things for this crew. And then you mentioned Freddie Hicks. Fred, Fred's a bit banged up right now. But once this group comes to whole, once they can get healthy, I think they could be a force to be reckoned with. But as I mentioned, you've got no time to worry about the youth or worry about the new guys. you got to buy into this system. you got to lock in. Because starting Monday night, it is going to be murderer's row in conference play. Or non-conference play, excuse me, Adam. So, Kyle, you talked about it being a unique scenario last year for the Tarleton State coaching staff and Billy Gillespie, Gillespie you know, sitting on the sidelines, letting Joe Jones sort of take the team and run with it as they were playing so well. My question to you is, is someone that's close to the program and has, has gotten to talk to Billy Clyde a number of times. You know, what, what did he learn – from watching the team from from that perspective last year, because you know, from my perspective, just as a fan and, and someone that that you know watches college basketball, it, it really felt like it, you you talked about it. His fingerprints were obviously all over that team. Uh, once again, 
Tarleton State top 50 in uh, defensive turnover rate. I believe they've been top 50 nationally every year under Billy Clyde. Uh, but the offense really like hit a second gear, you know, as we got to whack play last year. So I'm just curious, like, you know, that's that's unique stand uh, a unique scenario for a coach. D- does he think it's benefited him in any way? In, in any way, coming into this season. Well, Adam, I don't know as much if learning is the right word. I think that everyone gets a little bit of perspective when you get to take a step back and see things from the outside looking in. I wouldn't say as much that Coach learned anything, so to speak, or at least that he's verbalized to me. I think more than anything, Coach just did a great job supporting the guys and being there and trying to be a resource to Joe as much as he could without you know, overstepping, so to speak. I know it's kind of weird considering it's his program, but I go back to what I said is that coach has one goal, and that is to win every night. For Tarleton State to have more points on that scoreboard than whoever the Texans are competing against. And so I think coach showed a lot of humility. I think that that is not something that gets talked about enough is that he could have come back and said, no, I don't want to potentially get in the way of what, you know, my student athletes and then, one of the people he's closest with, Joe, what they're accomplishing right now. I want I want to let them finish the work they've started. And then once we get to a comfortable place in the offseason, then I'll take the reins back over. So, no, I wouldn't say Adam as much that he learned anything, so to speak, at least, at least that he's verbalized to me. But I do think that there is a ton to see about Coach in the way he handled last year and how he's handling the program moving forward. Yeah, we also touched on, it's just the plight of a mid-major, right? Graduation and teams leaving via the portal. Everyone deals with it, and, uh, you know, the Tarleton State, no exception um, with, with what was lost from last year's team. But Coach Gillespie gets a, a big get, in my opinion, in the transfer portal, getting Freddie Hicks back. Uh, he was obviously at Tarleton State, went to, Ar- went to Arkansas State last year. Now he's back, and you talked about, you know, a guy that fits uh, what Coach G wants to do defense, tough play, drawing fouls. Uh, Two years ago at Tarleton, Hicks, uh, top 10 nationally in fouls drawn per minutes on the floor. You get him back this year. How important is he going to be to build around for this team? Oh, he's crucial. He's going to be the centerpiece of this 24-25 program. Texans need him to provide that leadership with the guys gone. And you look back a couple of years ago, Freddie missed the first three games of the season, I believe, before we went to the Paradise Jam in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And his first game back, he goes, it was either 20 or 30 points against Belmont, but he hits the free throw line 28 times. It's because Fred just has a knack for putting himself in the right place at the right time. And it's like Coach G says with Fred, the way that he sets the tone is three ways he shows up on time with a great attitude and he gives coach everything he has and if the other guys on the team can follow suit in that the texans are going to be a handful for everyone on that schedule this year i think last year was important for fred personally i've gotten to visit with him about it you know he's got two parents that were arkansas state alums his uh, father had a successful career their mother had a very successful time there as well i think there was a part of fred that He needed to try that, see what it looked like. Arkansas State had recruited him before. They were really interested in getting him back home to Jonesboro. And so I talked to Fred about that. I think there would have always been a part of him, if he would have not tried that, that would have gone, huh, I wonder what if had I gone to Arkansas State. And so he got to try that experience. And then after one year there, he realized, Coach G's my guy. Coach has looked after Freddie every step of the way. And there's nobody around that will speak higher of Freddie Hicks than Billy Gillespie will. There's no doubt he's a key cog to this unit this year. The Texans, they need him to be everything and then some for them to be successful. Yeah, and, and you know, you look at the roster, and even though there's there's not a ton of minutes returning and there's definitely some unknowns, uh, you know, there, there's plenty of interesting pieces that seem to fit what uh, what Coach Gillespie has done in past years. That scrappy defense, guys that are going to play, you know, really just get up on you defensively, force turnovers, draw free throws. So, you know, the the backcourt is super interesting to me. I know, uh, you know, Marty Silvera comes from St. Peter's, so he's, you know, a Mac guy, Um, then went to D2. Now he looks – I don't know if he's going to be the starting point guard or not, but he certainly looks like he's in the mix. You get D'Antoine Grimes from Baylor, who's someone that just didn't play a ton there. Uh, But, you know, some some really interesting pieces, and – 
Kyle, I, I think this team, we talked about the non-conference schedule, how crazy tough it is with like big name after big name. But you go back to the first year Tarleton was in Division One, and you know, really like it, it was like apparent that they were undermanned against a lot of the teams that they were playing. And, and they scrapped hard with the likes of, I, I'm going off memory here, like Texas A&M really hung around in a game with them. Uh, th there was others on that, on that schedule. Uh, I look at this sort of November and December, the way I look at non-conference for all of the mid-majors, right? It's more about just playing your guys, figuring out your rotation, and, and getting it sorted out for whack play. Are, are you, you know, Grand Canyon is what they are. They're, they're going to be the favorite in this conference. No question. They are, you know, just on another level of almost any mid majors at this point. But like, how, how does, you know, what, what's the goal this year for Tarleton? What, what, what do you, what's like a reasonable expectation for this team as to what they can accomplish this year? I think the goal is to win a conference championship and then eventually a national championship. It's like coach said at the Texan club luncheon, whenever we introduced the basketball season, he said, look, that's the end goal here, is to climb the ranks of the mid-majors, make a deep run in March. So why not play all these guys? See what you got. And I think that's where you see the schedule that mimics ones of the past. You mentioned the A&M game the first year at the Division I level. Had a bunch of games scrapped that year due to uh, COVID outbreaks at different universities that the Texans had scheduled. And then next year, you play Gonzaga. You play Kansas. You play Stanford, Wichita State. You go to Michigan. I mean, it is a laundry list. And then because the Texans played those teams so tough and you saw how physical they were in your face, they don't back down, that's made scheduling difficult. It's hard to get people to Stephenville right now. And there are certain power fours that are saying, look, we're going to pay somebody thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to come in here. We don't want to stress and lose sleep the night before. And Coach G, he is well-respected around the college basketball community. So there's a handful of coaches that said, yeah, Coach G on our non-conference, that's a headache I don't want to deal with. And so the Texans are fortunate. You know, the, the power fours that are on there have, have signed up. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch and, and see. And I think it's going to benefit the Texans for conference play because when you go to SMU, when you go to Florida State, when you go to Michigan, when you go to Baylor – you're really getting to test yourself in those waters and how you handle adverse situations, how you match up against what, let's just be frank, is going to be better personnel at times. So you really find out a lot about yourself in this. But as far as an end goal, I mean, there is only one goal, and that is to win the Western Athletic Conference Tournament in March and go dancing in the NCAA Tournament. I, that's the, the beauty of college basketball, and it's the one thing that I think makes it just the, the best thing around everyone's playing for the same thing you know all 364 division one teams well especially when they get rid of the ridiculous transition period are playing for the same thing that's to get into that 68 team field and, and cut the nets down uh you know in, in march and and you know i i can't wait to see how it shakes out this year uh for tarleton state kyle thank you so much for joining uh you've been a fantastic guest as always i can't wait to listen to you call games this year on on the tarleton network there uh i i will I, I will absolutely be back out to visit uh still again 45 different places tarleton is is still one of my favorite stops so far i will 100 percent be uh heading back when they open their new building uh but if you're in, in texas or in that area this is the last year to, to check out a game at wisdom gym i highly suggest you do it it's a fantastic environment for a basketball game uh, check out all of our previews on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. We've put them all in a nice playlist. Uh, you can get, I think we're up over 20 at this point, um, sort of unique team previews, team specific that'll help you out, you know, as you as we get into the college basketball season. Um, again, thank you to Kyle. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can find me on Twitter and all platforms at Adam Trigger WT.